Bullshit! Welcome to the Jimquisition. I am James Stephanie Sterling, the Commander, and I am joined by the real-life Kate Sith, and he's definitely real life because he's life-size. Look at the size, look. Look at this comparison. Oh, I'm so excited to be on the show today, Stephanie, you wee lassie. Oh, I couldn't be more excited. Great. sounded a lot better in my head. Oh well, we're committed now. Shinra and materia and all and chocobos and moogle and stuff. Hey! Yes, that's so good. Let's get on with the show. On with the show! Gold saucer. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth sure is a whole lot of something else, right? Part reboot, part homage, part outright shameless parody. It's like somebody told the dev team this was the last video game that was ever going to be developed for the rest of time, so if they had any ideas, they better smoke them while they got them. An absolute train wreck of minigames, tonal shifts, and frequent dips into content for which the word surreal proves an inadequate descriptor. It's a game I've struggled to express my admiration for because because my excited, feverish descriptions of the preposterous head fuckery that is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth quite often makes me sound like I hate it. But believe me when I say that my comparing Rebirth to an hallucinatory nightmare characterised by equal parts audacity and stupidity is actually a compliment. This game is hubris manifest, a labour of lunacy from creative trolls who got away with their outrageous nonsense once and went mad with the freeing emboldenment. And it's brilliant. It's not just an impressively high quality video game, it's a creative triumph of absolutely not giving a single solitary fuck about what any fandoms might hold sacred. This game takes the thing you hold dear and fucks it up. Completely and totally just screws with the thing, often for no sake other than to screw with it, knowing that not only will you shut up, you will like it. Somebody pointed at one of the most acclaimed and significant video games of all time and said, I'm gonna ruin that and people are gonna love it. And by God, they were right. I'll be writing a full review of the game over on thegymquisition.com where I write my universally accepted critical appraisals, but it's taking a long time because this is one of the few games in history that I actually do feel I need to see through to the end, and the thing has a thousand years of content in it, and I'm too obsessive to just leave a region without 100% exploring it for Chadley and his gay little shorts. I do think I'm actually in the last part though. Maybe? I mean, at the time of writing, I started playing at 6 o'clock this morning, thinking I'll wrap up the final dungeon before starting the script, and by 1pm I had to stop playing and start writing the script. I have no idea now if I am anywhere near the credits. The point is, today is not exactly about reviewing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but lordy knows the game has practically been my life since it came out and I can't stop thinking about it, like that time I marathoned Battlestar Galactica and couldn't stop thinking about Edward James Olmos starring in a reality TV show called Edward James Olmost, where he gets a woman back to his flat but comes in his drawers before he can seal the deal. With Rebirth burrowed into my brain like a tick head first in a weeping red raw saw, I am powerless to go anywhere but where the whimsy takes me, and I'm all whimmed up about this game, so that's what you get in a video about. Thanks. It's a largely positive video concerning something I'm passionate about, so I'm expecting new record low views. I suppose before I go into detail with an in depth analysis of how fucking amazing Kate Sitha looks, I better qualify some of my ranting. I am very genuinely impressed at what a good game this is. I was a huge advocate for Final Fantasy VII Remake when it came around, genuinely calling it genius for the creative liberties it took and the excellent meta narrative. I added, however, that the game's genius was contextual, that my lasting historical belief hinged upon what came next. Specifically, I was prepared for a very particular and very famous death, and that's not a spoiler, to determine whether or not this series was a brilliant breaking of chains or a craven excuse to set right something that explicitly wouldn't benefit from it. What I was not prepared for, however, was for Rebirth to be so out of its fucking mind that my original concern no longer matters. This game's gonna do what it wants, I'm just along for the ride, and that is something the game has earned. <laughs> 
Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is baffling, hilarious, and most frequently baffling and hilarious at the same time. Absolutely nothing gets to happen in this fucking game without it becoming a ludicrous production. Cute little scene in the original game where you find Hojo in his lab coat on a beach. Now it's a lengthy battle against a giant octopus mech that ends with a formerly irrelevant NPC being cloned before turning into Moogles and exploding. Arriving at the charming gold saucer for the first time, gone is the simple pulling up of a tram trolley into a cute little well area, now it's a full length musical routine incorporating a completely meaningless but fucking amazing dance battle. There is a card game called Queen's Blood now and like Gwent before it, it's a richly defined game that hits the perfect note between simple and engrossing. Unlike Gwent, the card game is also an entire horror story subplot. Rebirth has tinkered with the game so much as to be almost unrecognisable. While it follows the general plotline of Final Fantasy VII, it's off the rails exceedingly more than it's on them, to a far greater degree than Remake ever dared. I mentioned it being a parody earlier and I really believe that. I think it was around the time I was on the ship headed for Coast to Del Sol that I stopped and said, Jesus Christ, this is genuinely just taking the piss out of Final Fantasy VII. Now by that point, I've been transported Jumanji style into a living board game version of the Fort Condor battles, had a popular series character decline to have a cutscene with me because he was, in his words, on the privy, and visited a bar run exclusively by and for bald people. They put their hands on their heads and they squeak them. So much shit, so much humour at the expense of each character's stereotypical traits, of the series' stereotypical traits. So many very deliberate nods to its 1997 forebear that revel in undermining things you expected or thought you knew. So much completely original stuff going on as to eclipse everything across the PSX game's entire three discs. The kind of chicanery that would make Star Wars fans cry sacrilege at the mere mention of making so many extreme deviations, but this one's been met with fan approval and critical acclaim because its blasphemy is just that damn divine. I've been comparing the game to Dragnet with people and it's a comparison not many seem to get. Basically, Dragnet was a police procedural radio drama in the 1940s, and in the 1980s it was remade as a comic spoof tribute with Dan Aykroyd in it. To me, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is to Final Fantasy VII what Dragnet is to Dragnet, a loving but nonetheless piss-taking reimagining rather than a truly serious attempt at a retelling. There's a dress code for detectives and robbery homicide. Section 3-605, 0.10, 0.20, 0.22, 0.24, 0.70, 0 0.80. Also, Kate Sith is the best graphics in video games. On top of everything else, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is of course visually impressive as heck, as is par for the course with Square Enix, but while the graphics overall are expectedly high quality, the detail animation, and sheer radiation of character coming out of everybody's favourite Shinra executive stroke Scottish cat toy has quite very genuinely stunned me. That is the best take I'm getting of that line, Jesus. Kate Sith is one of those characters. You know their type. The less humanoid, more silly RPG party member that most people hate for being annoying, but I really like, probably because they are annoying. Oh, it was an honest mistake. We didn't mean any- ah! <sighs> Yeah. Kate Sith is one such character, one I immediately gravitated towards when Final Fantasy VII was brand new. Among a bunch of fun but stylistically similar anime characters, Kate Sith had definitely stuck out as different to the point of jarring for some people, which I think contributed to his reputation. Not to mention the fact he's a luck-based offense and generally unremarkable stats put a lot of people off in the gameplay department. Frankly, I thought the character was fun, different in an appealing way, and he had one of the best elite motifs in the series. Seriously fucking great tune. One of the best things Rebirth does, in my opinion, is rehabilitate Kate Sith in every way. As a character, his more rude and imposing qualities have been toned down significantly, and rather than take the role of largely inconsequential hanger-on who other characters barely acknowledge, he settles fantastically into the role of one of the friendliest members of the cast. Well-liked and eager to prove he's a good guy. In fact, they did so well at this, they were so clever about altering the context of certain story elements that I'll say this, they managed to get me with him a second time. If you know what I mean. All the characters got slight overhauls for the better as this series has gone on. Even Yuffie, who some would say is even Yuffie, 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 that's right, isn't it? What did I do to deserve this? Who some would say is even more loathed than Kate Sith has retained her more bratty and combative elements, but tempered them by routinely showing she's awesome and making Barrett the entertainingly stoic target of most of her bullshit. 
Kate Sith's personality is probably the most altered, but as I think about it now, it might not be so much alteration as adding more of a personality than there was. Kate Sith did used to be a pretty flat character. In any case, I defy anyone to say he's at least not affable this time round. If nothing else, that beautiful Scottish voice coming out of him is to die for. <sighs> you okay? <sighs> oh, all the better for a wee lie down. <clears throat> so then. Onwards and upwards? He just sounds so lovely. As for gameplay, good fucking god, maybe it's just the bias talking, but he's an absolute riot. Par for the course, as one of Rebirth's biggest successes is in how it's taken seven characters that play very differently and made each one uniquely fucking enjoyable. But again, with Kate, it's more pronounced. He's got a great little system where he manually summons his Moogle and can ride him at will with a whole bunch of interactions contextually available. A really good example of the game taking a single detail from the original and turning it into its own entire mechanic just because it can. Also, riding on the Moogle is ridiculously bloody fun. The fast-paced way he just smashes stuff with his big fists, satisfyingly filling his ATB bar with swiftness and how colourful and silly his offence is. Love it. He still has quite a few luck-based abilities, but the concept of randomness has expanded to include, say, littering the battlefield with mines, or spinning around firing a giant laser in all directions. I'd also argue the way the battle system works now means luck-based stuff is less of a hassle, since offense continues so readily rather than waits its turn. You can just keep pummeling, throwing the dice, and pummeling again. Not only that, but the expansive ability system gives him some more straightforward stuff, like a move that's, well, just basically a big fucking punch. In any case, his ability to deal massive fuck off damage on the regular is a lot of yes for me. As can be said with everyone available, he is no weak link, and built right he can be powerful in several battle roles. So now I need to talk about how fucking amazing this character model looks because holy shit. The Moogle is the best bit, so let's do the cat bit first, which is admittedly the actual Kate Sith part. Detached from his Moogle in most scenes, he gets a lot more play than just being indistinct grey polygons you could barely make out on your old tube television. Largely unchanged from the 1997 art, in fact the least changed of all of them, what really makes him work is his brilliant animation. Partway between a cartoon cat, a real cat, and a person, but in a way that isn't creepy, I promise. Just how one moment he'll be parading around like the park mascot he is before circumstances, briefly see him curl his hands into paws and draw his arms in. In a section where you directly control him, you can really appreciate the hybrid animation in his three states of motion, from bipedal walking to four-legged feline running to clownish roll sprint. Oh, I'm detecting an uncontrollable pounding in my- There is no way Chadley isn't a proper little gay. Anyway, the real draw here is not the cat, but the heartwarming cuddle dumpling he rides around on. That big, beautiful Moogle is absolutely stunning just just look at him the texture of the fur for one thing is remarkable i've seen soft textures in a video game before but never have i seen plushness embodied so comprehensively it's the kind of plush that makes me feel like a damn fucking hypocrite because who was it i routinely criticized for going overboard with graphics and then whining that their expensive games didn't sell 10 million copies none other than square enix a company about which i explicitly complained don't waste your fucking money animating individual strands of hair on Lara fucking Croft. Yet here I am, admiring a Moogle's thread count. But look it! Praise must be given to the shading on the fur, which gives it both a sense of fullness and length. It creates the impression of those obscenely soft rabbit fur style blankets that you get at the range. So good! It makes me weep openly knowing that you could make a real life plush Moogle. In fact, many have been made and none of them will be as soft as that. This is carried over into the way he moves, with that big, lovely, juicy round belly just rolling around with a smoothness that would ordinarily be reserved for like the highest end of cutscenes, let alone this weird little fucker's tum tum. I really can't get over just how much they made every part of it squish and contort around its limbs as it walks. You know those squishmallow things you see in supermarkets all the time? Yeah. They need to make a game, and they need to get in touch with the Kate Sith guys. I was planning to do the entire video just about how fucking good Kate Sith looks, but another beautiful thing about Rebirth is that it really doesn't matter where you were going, so it doesn't really matter where you end up, just go with it, because the ride is going to be interesting, and I am glad that I beamed about the character as a whole, because the rehabilitation of Kate Sith is indicative of everything good about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the way it takes the little details and explodes them into something wild and overblown, for better or worse, the way it draws from the original in part to homage and in part to poke fun at it. The way it takes the less popular elements of Final Fantasy VII and does something either brilliant
brilliant or just plain weird with them. The way it cares about making you care about everything it's doing, even if you don't care. Also, it's fucking bananas. Oh wait, look, who's come to tea now? Hello, come inside and have a cup of tea. God, the celebrities just don't stop. Thank God for me. Thank God for tea, cup of tea. Come on, Lily. <laughs> God, well, uh, God, why does everything I do inevitably devolve into this? I'm not even getting off on it. I don't like this. And yet I must map. Come on, man, I know this ain't to see. Why don't you and me go book us some rooms?